Hello. Just going to share this to my group real quick. Hello, hello. How are you doing, Facebook family? As promised, tonight is the start of my three-day live stream series. Now, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Shala Ezekoli. I am a physician coach. I help busy physicians defeat and prevent burnout, as well as create options for themselves outside and within, actually, traditional medicine. And I do this through life, career, and business coaching for physicians. So, um, today I'm starting the first of a three-day live stream series called Your Optimal, um, Your Optimum Life Now, which is the name of my year-long program for physicians, Your Optimum Life Now. And I'm doing this as a sort of lead into that to let people know what I do. And over the next three days, I'm going to be taking one aspect from life, career, or and business coaching. Today, I'm going to be talking about the life part, tomorrow, career, and the next day, business. So today, I am going to be talking about that wonderful, wonderful and dreadful thing called time management. Now, you may have read a book or two about time management. You may have, you know, maybe you've read some blogs. Maybe you've, you know, you've, you've come across that phrase before, time management. I actually call it time on management because, well, you can't control time. Can you really manage it? But, hey, this is what we've got, right? We've got 24 hours a day to do with it what we want or need to do, right? So, but what I find is that when looking for, hi, Ashoda, looking for, looking at books on time management, all of them seem to be written from the point of view of a CEO who had like 50 secretaries. It's like, okay, that doesn't really speak to me. I want to, I want to do stuff. I want to, I want time management from a perspective of, you know, a young, busy physician who has a young family, a business, uh, you know, doing maybe ministry work or charity work. And I didn't really find very much. So I started to put things together myself. And I'm about to share with you seven tips that will actually save you up to 10 hours per week if you apply them all. So you can't just do one. <laughs> you have to do all of them. So I'm just going to log into my page here from another device so that I can add things to it, right? And I'm going to talk, I'm just going to jump, jump right in and talk about time management. So the first thing, number one thing, this, so these are my top seven tips to saving time and can save you up to 10 hours a week. So wouldn't you like to be able to claw back 10 hours a week? I, you know, I think we all would. So the first one is to know where your time is going. Okay. A lot of times we don't really know where our time is going. Um, we think it's, um, we have this weird idea about time. For example, I ask people this question. Um, if you have a doctor's appointment, and you live 30 minutes away from the doctor's, you have a doctor's appointment at noon and you live 30 minutes away from the doctor's office. Most people say they will leave home at 11.30. That's <clears throat> because it takes time to, you know, look for your keys, walk to the car, open the car door, sit down, adjust the seatbelt. Time is going. Sometimes by the time you've peeled out of your driveway, 10 minutes have gone. See? So sometimes we, we need to consider these other aspects when we're talking about time management so number one 10 hours yes guaranteed <laughs> so know where your time is going so you have to be truthful with yourself and real and know where all your time is going for example let's say you work a nine-to-five job okay but you have to leave at 7 a.m to get to work for nine because you have a two-hour commute and then you leave at 5 or 5 30 to get home at 7 30 so that's not, that's no longer a nine to five. That's now a 12 hour day. So you now know that, okay, I spent four hours a day commuting. And yes, that used to be me. I used to spend three hours a day commuting. So now when you know how much time you truly, you, when you know where all your time is going, then you will know how much free time you have. And when you know how much free time you have, you will know what to allocate when, what, how, and how to do things. It's like money, right? If you don't know how much money you have coming in, how will you know how much you have going out and how much you're able to spend? 
For example, let's say you have a thousand dollars coming in and you're spending two two thousand dollars. That means you're in the hole for a thousand dollars. But if let's say you now know, oh, you've I've done these calculations. I know I have a thousand dollars coming in. Then I know, okay, how much am I um, allocating to food, to clothing, to rent, or whatever? When you know where your time is going, just like when you know where your money is going, you are able to plan appropriately. Don't treat treat time like money, okay? And the thing about money is that you can always get money back, right? You can beg, borrow, or steal. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't steal. <laughs> but you can't get time back. It, the, the minute you um, that's gone is already gone forever. So know where your time is going. So I would I would recommend doing a time audit over the period of a week and see where your time is going. When you do that, then you know how much free time you have left. Rather than like, oh, well, I work from nine to five, and you think you work a, what, eight-hour day, but really you work a 12-hour day because you have this long commute, and in those times, you can't really do much else, okay? So sit down and figure out how much time you're spending to do how many things in a typical week. Now, number two, this is a good one. Organize your time around your priorities. So what are your priorities? I didn't say your sister's priorities, your mother's priorities, your father's priorities, your husband's priorities, your wife's priorities, your children's priorities. What are your priorities? What are they? Ask yourself, am I living the life I want? Am I doing, are the things I want to do be, have, are they present in my life? What are my priorities? A lot of times we keep saying, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. But we don't know what our priorities are. So you don't even know what you want to use the time for. So, you know, then why are you complaining you don't have time? Keep living, you know, a <laughs> wild life. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. So ask yourself, is this what I want? When you are able to ask yourself that question, then you're able to have priorities and when you're able to have priorities you're able to organize your life around them for example i meet people who year in year out they tell me i want to write a book then i'm like okay let's set up an appointment let's get the process going etc another year passes they haven't reached out and they have these amazing stories and then i meet them year in year i'm like ah and i want to write a book oh, and i don't have but i don't have time i'm like mm. Because you're waiting for time to just fall on you from heaven and be like, da da, here, I'm time to write your book. That is not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Here's the thing about life you always get busier as life goes on. There's not going to be a time in your life where you're going to be like, oh, wow, I'm less busy. I have all the time in the world. It, it, life just doesn't happen that way. Remember when you were a little kid and you said, oh, when I grow up, I'm, I'm not going to have to do all this study and I'll have time. Oh, ho, where are you now? Look at you. Mm, here we are. Mm, okay. So organize your life around your priorities. If you want to write a book, organize your time around it. If you want to travel, organize your time around it. If you want to have a garden or decorate or I don't know, hang from the rafters. Organize your time and your life around your priorities. Because if you don't do that, other people's priorities are always going to come first. And those other people's priorities may not be your priority. If starting a business is a priority for you, organize your time around it. Take your ideas and projectify them and organize your time around it. Or else you will never get anything done. And all you're going to be doing is ringing your hands going, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. I say, ha, Dr. Shala, how do you do it all? I'm telling you now how I do it all. So, hey, listen. <laughs> Which brings me to the next thing, schedule. Schedule, schedule, schedule. You have something, it's called Google Calendar. Almost everybody on the face of the earth has a Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account, go and get one. Even if you don't use it for emails, use it for a calendar. In fact, I have a separate Gmail account for my calendar because there's so many things on my calendar that, you know, it would be too much flooding into my Gmail. So I have actually have a Gmail account that I use only for a calendar. Get yourself a Google calendar. And no, Google is not paying me for this. I just love their calendars color coding things. I, my husband says this, what doesn't get scheduled doesn't get done. Schedule your priorities. Don't prioritize your schedule, schedule your priorities. Because if you are, you would, you will always be looking for time if you don't have priorities and schedule them. 
Does that make sense? Google Calendar will send you reminders. Google Calendar, you know, if you don't have a calendar of some kind, you will always be behind the eight ball because you will forget things. You will forget what's a priority and what's not, you know, and that's why I say you have to prioritize, right? Know what's important. Know the things that are number one for you. You cannot have a horizontal list in life. Some things will always be more important than others and some people too. Not everybody is number one. Number one, me. Number one, husband. Number one, child. Number one, auntie. Number one, friend. No, no, no. You can't have a horizontal list in life for people or things. Your list has to be is it vertical right here. <laughs> That's the opposite of horizontal. <laughs> so set up your Google Calendar. Let it sync. If you're a business owner, let it sync to other calendars. You, Tasha, you use Google Calendar. It's, it's great. I've used it this whole time. Um, You know, I was kind of bumbling around in the dark about, what, seven, eight years ago. I don't remember. And one of my coaches was like, hey, Google Calendar, go check it out. I'll show you how to use it. And that was the best thing. That was one of the best things she ever did for me. So, number four, leverage the power of incremental change. <gasps> what is that? So you see, when people ask me, how do you find time to do all the things you do? That's my secret. I've blogged about it. I've talked about it. I've done free and paid seminars on this. Leveraging the power of incremental change means that you take these little things, these big things you want to do, and do them in little chunks. I want to write a book. Do you know that if you write for 30 minutes a day, right? Let's say you write 500 words, a page. So you write a page every day for 30 minutes and that's 500 words. In six months, you would have written two books. So all my people out there who want to write books, what's your excuse? It's 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day is 2% of your day. So now we've, we've, so now we see where we're, 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 it's a sequence. First of all, you know where your time is going right? To know how much time you actually have, that's free, right? Then you, you schedule your time around your priorities, right? And then now we've gone down to um, scheduling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then leveraging the power of incremental change. Look, if you want to eat an elephant, if you keep biting away at that elephant, one day that elephant will finish. If you want to walk a thousand miles, it's one step at a time. High heels grow less as we ascend them. Do bit by bit by bit. If you have to travel in a month, put one thing in your suitcase, two things here. You open a suitcase. This is what I do when I'm traveling. Because, you know, we have things to do. It's, I don't have packing time. So at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, I want to take that with me. I fold it. I put it there. I want to do this. I fold it. I put it there. And then over time, I've now I've packed. I've written six books. And, they, you know... There was no time where I had this huge chunk of time where it just fell on me and I wrote for hours and hours on end. Life does not work that way. You still have to eat, go to work, you know, look after children, family, breathe, rest, sleep, you know. So when you do things in little chunks, it doesn't feel overwhelming. And you are able to get it done as just as part and parcel of your life, as part and parcel of your day. Exercise. We tell we tell patients you should exercise 150 minutes a week. It's like, oh, but that is just 30 minutes a day. It's a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. That was how I was able to hold down two jobs, have a business, raise two little kids, and all of that. Hey, Varia, how are you? And do all of that. And still have time to sleep at night because you do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. Don't wait for one big time to fall on you and then, oh, you know, I'm just going to do it all on so, so, and so day. That, that day might not come. And when I say that day might not come, I'm not saying we're going to die or anything, but that on that that future time you're looking at, how do you know you won't have something else? The thing that's happening now is probably going to be happening then. Leverage the power of incremental change. Do things in little bits. It's a well, it's, 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 it's a secret, but not really a secret. It just seems so simple. It seems like something that would be too simple to work. But it works. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. 
over a period of some weeks over Christmas, I did a bit of decluttering, but I didn't do it all at once. I it was one closet to over two days, another closet over two days, another, and a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there, and now I've decluttered everything. Whereas if I was like, oh my God, I'm going to declutter my whole house. Girl, the house should still be full of clutter. It's a little at a time, a little at a time, a little at a time. And these are some of the things that I work with my clients, with my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. It's like, you know, let's piecemeal your day and figure out where you can do these things that you want to do. Where can you do these things you want? And I'm going to post a little link. Uh, give me one second. I'm posting a link to where if you want to get on a call with me to talk about working with me, copy a link right here. I'm going to post that in the comments on another device yay done so you can book that right away if you want and we can just get on the we can get on the phone and call on on, 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 a, on a call so moving forward number five set boundaries <laughs> boundaries no limits no boundaries yeah guess what there are limits and there are boundaries in your life you're not god so Boundaries can sound can can sound cold, adversarial, like ah, boundaries. When when you talk to people about boundaries, the next thing they're all like up in the air and whatnot. But here's the thing: boundaries are not calculating or cold or selfish. A boundary is just simply knowing and stating what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. That's all a boundary is. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Because here's the thing: if you have no boundaries, everything. In your everything now becomes priority, but everything can't be priority, right? You're going to have to be able to say no to some things. You're going to be able to have to say, I don't do this. I won't do that. I won't do the other. Let me give you an example from my own life. Now, there are two days of the year where I do absolutely nothing. That's Memorial Day and Labor Day. And I've been this way for the last <clears throat> 10 years, okay? So, you know, there used to be a time when uh, my former church, they would have barbecues and be like, oh, and those are the days they do barbecues. I'm like, ah, we missed you at the barbecue. I'm like, on Labor Day and Memorial Day, I don't leave my house. I just don't. Those are the two days where I do nothing. I don't cook. I don't, I, I order food and it's on the table. People can eat that for breakfast, lunch, dinner if they want. And Dr. Shala rests on those days. Of course, there are like other days where I rest, but these are two non-negotiable days. After a while, everybody just got used to not seeing me at the church barbecue. Because it's like, I don't want to be there. I want to rest. So what was the point? What would be the point of being an angry Christian at a church barbecue? <laughs> talk about a paradox. It's like angry because you don't really want to be there. And that's why I talk about boundaries. That's what I talked about. And my second point was your priorities. What are your priorities? everybody's priorities cannot be your priorities because you're a sovereign agent. And I did this something in my group, my, my physician group about, you know, being a sovereign agent and not succumbing to little girl or princess energy, wanting to ask at all and sundry for permission to do things. No, you're a freaking adult. When you were a kid, you wanted to grow up so you could do anything you want. Well, guess what? Here you are. Do what you want with your own time. Set boundaries. And here's the funny thing. People who don't like you setting boundaries are the people who are benefiting from your lack of them because they can take advantage of you. Another boundary I set, I don't take calls after 10 p.m. Why? Why would I? Guess what? There's, a, hey, there's only one person's voice I want to hear after 10 p.m. <clears throat> and that's my husband, okay? You'd better have an emergency if you're going to call me at 10 p.m. After 10 p.m. No, I, we're not going to do that. <laughs> It had better be an emergency, you know? Uh, another boundary I have is on scheduled phone calls. Again, unless it's an emergency, and that too is because I'm kind of busy. Like, I'm in the middle of something. The likelihood that I, I will be just doing nothing to where if somebody just calls me out of law, answer the phone is very, very rare. My time is regimented. From this time to this time, I'm doing this. From this time to this time, I'm doing this. From this time to this time, I'm resting. From this time to this time, I'm hanging out with my kids. Yes, that is my life, and that's the way I like it. Set boundaries. So now you schedule things so that because that's another thing, if you don't have boundaries and you don't have priorities, anything anybody else wants will be will, will come will, will become a priority. Your sister calls you to come and take her, her braids down at, at 10 p.m. 
or 12 midnight and you're going somebody calls you oh come and help me move like i was like <laughs> i pity the fool that can come me to come and help them move two things i don't do i don't help people move and i don't lend people money <laughs> problems but that's another story for another day now because if you have boundaries and a schedule somebody tries to put something on there or say this and this it's a ridiculous people yep that's the thing people are ridiculous so if you don't have boundaries they will take advantage of the fact that you don't have boundaries and you know the funny thing a lot of people have rigid boundaries but when it comes to you they want you to relax your boundaries tell me how does that make sense i don't know but that's just the way people are so people can do what they do but you don't have to buy into it you have to learn to say no let me tell you something about saying no mm -hmm. people think that if you say yes all the time people will like you more it's a lie people will not like you more they will just use you more saying yes all the time doesn't make people like you more doesn't make people respect you more it makes them use you more and the sooner you get to know that the better so please say your no. If someone's going, to, if somebody doesn't like you because you said no to them, that means they did not even want a relationship with you in the in the first place. They just wanted your compliance. And the minute you say no, they get mad and they frog off. Don't want to use, can't use the, that word on Facebook. They frog off and go and find somebody else to leech off of. Good luck to them. Goodbye. And that's the thing. You don't even have to cut people off. Just say, well, you know, I'm not able to do that today. And watch how they react. And then you go and see whether they like you or whether they just like you because you're a yes man or a yes woman. Make up your mind in 2021. Time management involves not being a yes man or a yes woman. Can you see I'm saving you 10 hours a week? All those nonsensities you may have been said, they will be okay, exactly. They will be okay, they will be fine. And here's the thing. When people know that you can say no to their request, they will come correct. They won't just come, as we say in Yoruba, ilokulo. They won't just, that means just offering you nonsense. They won't, they won't just come and offer you nonsense or tell you nonsense or ask you to do something that's just completely nonsensical. <laughs> they will come correct when they know that. Because think about your own life. Haven't you been told no? And when you were told no, what happened? You didn't die and the person didn't die. Somehow or the other, you figured yourself out. And if you say no, they know you for who you are. Exactly. They know this one can tell us yes or no. So if we really want her to do something, we will, you know, we will, we will come correct. We'll make sure that, yes, she's the only one that can do it. We will make sure that, yes, she is the, you know, um, we, we, we've exhausted our, all our other options. Now, please eh, let, let be free about your no. It's okay. They will survive. They will survive. And if they don't like you because you said no, it means they don't respect your boundaries. And now you know them for who they are. If you're somebody who has been saying yes to everything and who doesn't have boundaries, expect pushback when you start. So people are not all automatically going to fall in love. Like, oh, wow, she's so boundary. How nice. Absolutely not. Can I tell you the numbers of relationships I've lost because I started saying no to folks? But guess what I have? Peace of mind. And I know those folks for who they are. People who all they want is your yes. And the minute you say no, they get mad. They got offended. They ostracize you. They cut you off. And then, you know, it's like, it's all right. It's really all right. You like my hair? Thank you. <laughs> I know. All you have to do is compliment my hair. And I go to cloud nine. Number six, eliminate time-wasting activities. I told you this was going to save you 10 hours a week. You didn't think it was going to save you 10 hours a week by you doing nothing now, did you? No. Eliminate time. Things that waste time. Things that you know. They say the average woman in the U.S. watches about 34 hours of TV a week. Now, if you watch 34 hours of TV a week, you can carve out some of that time to work on your dream, to work on some other thing you want to do. So you can cut that. So you see, if you work 34 hours of TV a week, I've already helped you cut that down. Just take 10 of those hours in the week and do something else with them. 
there you go your 10 hours saved moving on no but i don't know who these women are or men i don't know where that study came from i actually don't believe it but um when it comes to eliminating time wasting activities you need two things you need to be truthful and you need to be ruthless you need to actually say okay is facebook wasting my time i had a client once and then again like i said these are some of the things i work with clients i'm like okay from this time i we actually go through okay so from this time to this time what are you doing you know we really get into the nitty-gritty <laughs> of what where the time going okay but so that means you have one and a half hours in which you can do things right right so why aren't you doing things then uh oh there you go sometimes you have to be ruthless and truthful with yourself i had someone i had someone who had set literally seven hours every day that we were able to like find every day seven hours a day that we were able to quote unquote find so is it tv is it social media is it unscheduled phone calls a lot of time unscheduled phone calls can waste your time oh my goodness on scheduled phone calls, like before you know it, you're on the phone and you're talking and you're talking. And if you're like me, oh my goodness, me, eh? Let me tell you something. <clears throat> talking is my gift. Like you didn't know that already. I remember a few years ago, somebody said, ah, that Nancy Pelosi talked for nine hours. And there were people were like, oh wow, Nancy Pelosi talked for nine hours. I was like, is that a thing? Is that a big deal? I can talk for nine hours. I've already talked for five or six. And people are like, hey, you can talk for nine hours. I'm like, sure, that's not a big deal at all. I'm energized by talking. So <laughs> if I get some on phone calls, I will be talking and talking and talking. I talk, you talk. I talk, you talk. Then we move to the next topic and the next. So if the day I want to do that, I schedule it and I say, hey, can I call you at so, so, and so time? So sometimes on scheduled phone calls will throw off your plans for the day. And then now you're scrambling, right? There are some people who are time-wasting activities. Sorry, not sorry, it has to be said. Some humans are time-wasting activities. Let me give you an example of these humans. Do you know the song from My Fair Lady, and I'm really dating myself, yes. It says, there's a line that says, um, she will beg you for advice, your reply will be concise, she will listen very nice and then go out and do precisely what she wants. Some of you have friends like that. Time is money. Some people do not want help. They want relief. Some people want to vent. Somebody is talking and talking and talking. You solved that problem last week. They call you again. They didn't take your advice. And they are calling and they are talking and they are talking and they are talking. No things for what they are. Hmm? This person doesn't want advice, wants to vent. Somebody like that, you practice detached empathy like oh my goodness i'm so sorry da, 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 da. did you do that thing i suggested no i didn't because and they always have an excuse yeah but mm, okay okay you know what i have an appointment right now and yes you do because there's something on your schedule that you have to do to get to i have an appointment right now i'll talk to you later look is when you when you see things for the truth of what they are and who they are and see people for who they are it will free you up to be able to classify things and people. Some people, some whole humans are time-wasting activities on their own. It's sometimes the people. Let's talk about, and then some people call and they want to gossip. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, really? Is it that? Oh, okay. Yeah, so, and I'm changing the subject. I do not want to engage in gossip. What am I gossiping for? Look, my life is so much more interesting to me that I don't need to talk about nobody else. Again, that's me. Maybe I'm vain. Maybe I'm a narcissist. I don't know. The list is different for everyone. Some people, it's social media. For me, it's not social media because social media is where my work is at. And I don't waste time on social media. When I'm on social media, I'm on social media for a purpose. I work a bit, I play a bit, and then I go on and do some other stuff. Even though I appear to be always on social media. But if I was always on social media, I wouldn't have been able to live the life i'm living <laughs> anyway sometimes maybe you don't have to go cold turkey like let's say you go your you've you've done your time audit and you find that ah, i've spent like three three hours a day on social media why don't we cut this down to two or one and use that hour put something on the calendar something you really want to do maybe you want to write a book maybe you want to start a business you want to write your business plan maybe you want to finally pull together the colors to build your website maybe you maybe there's some stuff you have to do for your career that you know, maybe like present a paper or something 
okay you know what today I, i've seen that on fridays i watch tv for three hours you know what i'm just going to watch one hour and in the next two hours i'm going to find collaborators for this paper that's how you move forward in life that's how you save time to be able to do other things or sometimes you just need time for margin like time to rest and have some freaking downtime you can't be working all the time somebody once told me about a book called sleep is for suckers i'm like because of that title i will never ever read that book never how can you tell me sleep is for suckers you need sleep you need sleep so sometimes your 10 hours might be just hours to rest because you've been running ragged hi brother caller thanks so now i have to write things down that's our ramble i will be talking here for nine hours oh you know i'm going to bed the next uh point is say no to say yes okay now this goes hand in hand with setting boundaries i talked about saying no but let me give let me go a little bit deeper because sometimes when we say oh you have to set boundaries you have to say no it makes us sound like we are wicked people but here's the thing if you say yes to something you're automatically saying no to something else because the time you have now is not duplicatable duplicable whatever man if you're saying yes to something you're by you're saying no to something else that you could be doing in that time value yourself value your time literally put a time value put a dollar value on your time you need time to live the life you want to live so that means you have to say no to some things you cannot say yes to everything when you say yes to everyone else, you're saying no to yourself. When you're saying yes to taking somebody's hair down at midnight, you're saying no to your rest. And you have to get up at six in the morning. Don't hesitate to say no to things and people that are a time suck. Say, learn to say no. And it doesn't have to be, that's a, it doesn't have to be rude, right? If we say yes to something, you're saying no to something. Yes. It doesn't have to be rude. It could be something as simple as, I don't have the bandwidth for this at this moment, but thank you for thinking of me. And guess what? You always want to leave the positive one at the end. <laughs> like, oh, let's say you can't, somebody invites you to a party, but you've planned in that moment that you're going to do some, maybe some self-care thing or whatever. And this party is popped up at the last minute. It's like, I'm sorry I won't be able to make it to your party. I have, I have a scheduling clash, but thank you for thinking of me. So you are left with the positive, not the other way around. Because you know, when you, when you use a sentence with but, it's everything after the but that the person remembers. So don't say thank you for thinking of me, but I'm not coming. I'm not coming, but thank you for thinking of me. That's a free one. <laughs> there are some activities that have no end goal. Don't do them. I talked about people who are time wasters. People who want to pick my brain. My brain is not a strawberry. So economists call it opportunity cost. Exactly. Can I pick your brain? No, I'm sorry. I do X, Y. I'm able to do X, Y, Z for my clients. Would you like to schedule a call on my calendar so that I can see what you need help with and see if you would, and you can see if you would like to become my client. Can I meet you for a virtual coffee? Depends on who it is. <laughs> it's like, not everybody. <laughs> I, you, don't, you don't have to respond to everything. It wastes time. Time wasters. Every event. You can't go to every event that pops up. Sometimes, because like me, my schedule is back tight. So like, <laughs> want me to come to your event, you better let me know on time. And a lot of times people want to pick your brain, don't want to do it in your own time or when you're free. They don't want to wait. They want to do it now. Say, like, yeah, honey, no. <sighs> Volunteer activities, church activities, like, ah, don't touch that. I'm going to touch it. You don't buy the love of God with the number of church activities you do. Pick one or two things, be good at it, serve there, do very well, be happy. all i'm gonna say about that actually you know that's not all i'm going to say about that a lot of times i'm a christian right i'm a christian too 
But people seem to act as though the more church-based activities they do, the more they, the more God loves them or whatever. I don't know where that comes from. Or maybe it comes from a place of wanting to help and seeing a need and wanting to meet that need. But here's the thing. You, one person, are not called to meet every single need of the church, of the community, of the people, of the race, of the continent. There's always going to be more to do. And the more you do, especially as a volunteer, the more you will be given to do. Pick something that calls to your purpose and do it well. You can't do every church activity. But there will be people that make you feel like, ah, if you don't pick up that, that, and the other, and the other, like God is going to be angry with you. Yeah, and they're like, mm, is that really how God operates? Okay, so for example, let's say you have a child, right? And you say to your child, uh, here, take this plate to the kitchen, okay? And then you're like, oh, no, wait, take this cup. And then, oh, the child is now having two things. No, then you need to take this basin, put it on your head. And there, then there's one more thing. Put it on your put it on your foot and start hopping. If you won't do that to your child, I'm telling you, God will not do that to you. Am I lying? If you won't do that to your child, I'm now I'm gonna go Bible. Jesus said, My yoke is easy and my burdens light. In the same vein, he accused the Pharisees of putting extra burdens on the people. So are you taking the burdens of the Pharisees or the burdens of Jesus, which is my yoke is easy and my burden light? If it's not light and easy, ask yourself, should I be doing this? Who boy. Next thing. Here's another, another touchy subject. What can you delegate? Think of the dollar amount of your time. What can you delegate to somebody else? What can you outsource? What can you pay somebody to do? Now, before you throw up your hands, I'm like, ah, I can't afford anything. Have you even looked? So first of all, remember priorities, right? Have you even, do you even know what you want? Maybe you want a house cleaner. Maybe you want someone to do your laundry. Have you even looked into those things to even see whether you can afford them? Maybe you can make space for them. Maybe you can, you know, cut down your shoe budget or whatever. It's a cop out to just say, I can't afford something because your mind has been conditioned that because you are a certain X gender or what a Y gender or whatever gender, you're supposed to do this. I'm a woman. I'm supposed to clean. I don't know. I'm a man. I'm supposed to mow the lawn. Whose rules though? Is it in a legal book somewhere? Because if it is, please somebody show me because I ain't never seen that nowhere. You need to be able to delegate. And this is why I was talking in my group about little girl energy. And, you know, the, the, the little girl energy wants to bounce around, do everything. I want to do everything so I can show everybody I'm busy. Uh, you will just die before your time. And yes, I know people that that's happened to, sadly. Ah, I have to do everything. To prove what? You're running around from pillar to bulls. You're unhappy. You don't have time for your own priorities. And it's like, ah, no, I have to clean the house because I'm a woman. You're going to end up a dead woman. I have to mow the lawn because I'm a man. Please, give somebody 50, give the neighborhood boy 50 bucks and let him move. People have heart attacks because they're trying to shovel snow. Yes, this happens in Chicago. Every year, people have heart attacks because they're shoveling snow. When they can give somebody $20, a young strapping boy. You know, shoveling snow is hard. And now you're, you're, you're 50 something and you're inhaling that cold air. <sighs> So it's not just women that do this. Men do this nonsense too. <laughs> and that's why I don't restrict what I share to, to women, to men or women. Fine, we, there, there are different challenges. Being a man, being a woman has different challenges. But the truth is that, yes, men can hear what I have to say too. Ah, I have to mow the lawn because that's what my father did. I have, to I have to shovel snow. Why? Why? Why do you have to shovel snow? And if you know that snow is coming, if you're windy, start keeping your $20 from summertime. How about that? De learn to delegate. That's what sovereign people do. They look around and see what has to be done. And what is the best way to get this done? Not how can I do it myself? Think about it. Hmm? If 
it, think about Amazon, right? Who we all know who owns Amazon. His name is Jeff Bezos, right? Imagine if something, let's say some one of the robot arms of one of their shipping machines breaks or whatever machines they use in Amazon, I don't know. Will Jeff Bezos leave where he is and come and repair the ma machine? Of course not. Even if he could repair machines, why would he do that? He has more important things to do because he's the sovereign of Amazon. You're the sovereign, you're the freaking sovereign of your own life. Act like it. And you say, ah, ah, I don't want to hire somebody to clean. Eh, I can't afford it. Look at your budget. And, and this is, again, this is something I help my clients. I'm like, okay, let's look at your budget. You know, you're subscribed to this thing, for example, and you've been subscribed to it for years and you don't use it anymore. Can we free up that money to put towards this? Can we do that? So what I do with my clients, I meet with my clients every single week. What I do with my clients is really close. So, you know, this is a bit cookie cutter, but just start to think about it. Delegation is not a sign of weakness. And speaking of signs of weakness... When men delegate, they're seen as bosses. When women delegate, they're seen as lazy. Let's borrow from the men, please. And let's be seen as bosses too. Delegate. For example, an hour of coaching with me is $500. If you want to book one hour session, it's $500. Um, of course, my programs end up working out cheaper because, you know, we, I don't charge the program according to one hour session. But if I think about my life like that, okay, I charge, I charge $500. A cleaner coming to this house pay, takes like $120. Hmm? So it's better for me to work an hour, right? Pay the cleaners and still have a profit than spend six hours cleaning this house and then not have any energy to do anything. Be grumpy, tired, angry. And that's why you, some of you are so angry with your children because they are untidy because you spend time cleaning yourself. Maybe if you hire the cleaner, like, oh, eh, the cleaners are coming next week. Yes. Some people are resentful because I've spent all this day cleaning and nobody helped me and now you're dirty in the place. When my kids dirty, I'm like, uh, you guys need to pick that up. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Don't dirty the place. But I'm not, I'm not evo emotionally invested in, the, in how clean the house is because I ain't the one cleaning. I'm paying for somebody to clean it. And before you go, I can't afford. I've been hiring cleaners since residency because what happened? I remember one day I just looked at myself. I was cleaning baseboards and I was trying to get my four-year-old to clean. And it was the, one of the one, one days I had off and one sunny day in Chicago. How often do those coincide? I just looked at myself and looked at my life and I was like, what the bleep? My husband came home that day and I said, we're hiring cleaners. He said, why? I said, because mama don't want to do it no more. He was like, hmm. And I've, yes, and I've been hiring cleaners since I was in residency. So, you know, it's like, well, hey, I can't afford it. You look for what you can afford, right? There are levels for everyone, you know? Maybe it doesn't have to be a fancy website. Maybe it's in Facebook groups, calling your friends. Ah, you, people now don't have jobs. Some of them want to clean houses. But if you don't think of it as something that you deserve or you should have or you should do or have a delegation mentality or a boss or queen or sovereign mentality, you just suffer for nothing. For nothing. Because it's better for you to hire somebody and clean you to clean your house and go out your, if you're a doctor and do one extra shift. At least that's what you train for. That's your thing. It's like cleaning the house. There is no glory in suffering. I don't have time. What do you want to do? I want to write a book. I want to start a business. I want to do that. So what do you spend your Saturdays doing? Cleaning my house. Good luck with that. It's not going to work for you anymore. Because what's going to happen is that you will get to a point in your life where you start getting mad at people who achieve the things you wanted to achieve. While you're busy cleaning your house. One of my former pastors says, don't die washing a teacup. Say no to unnecessary activity. There's some things that you can do that would take a long time. Like in my, in, from, in my case, it's cleaning. This house, if I were to start cleaning it from top to bottom, it's going to take me nothing less than seven hours. And I won't even do a professional job. You guys, some months ago, I posted my laid bed on Facebook. You guys saw it. I don't even know how to make a freaking bed. Say no to constantly checking things. Checking WhatsApp, checking Facebook, checking email, checking, checking, checking. What's going to change in the last one hour? 
a lot of time wasting, checking, 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 checking. What are you looking for? Me, I check everything at one time and then I leave it alone. And I come back later and I check it again. And I go do, go do something else. You have to come to a point where you're saying no to more things than you're saying yes to. And those things you're saying yes to are your apex priorities. Now, prevent me, present me with an opportunity to, to speak, to coach, to write, I'm there. Now, present me an opportunity to do some nonsense thing, go to a party or gossip or cleaning house. No. Because if I had spent all that time just cleaning and not even thinking of ways to delegate things, I wouldn't be able to live the way I'm living now. I wouldn't have time. Th start to think of what you can outsource. And I'm going to put this link back again. Uh, give me one second. This is a link to my calendar if you want to work with me. Because I'm not quite done. Uh, paste. There we go. Because... I'm offering my year long program right now. And that program, you work with me for a year or honestly for as long as you want to. But if you work with me for a year, then we can just, we can really build things from the ground up. So by the end of the year, you're like, yes, I'm living the life I want, not what somebody else wants. I haven't climbed the ladder and found it's leaning against the wrong wall. No, I'm living the life I want. And when you work with me for a year, you get access to all my programs and I'm launching at least six programs. So any programs, any paid programs, master classes or anything of that nature that I'm doing, you get free access to them. So book your call and let's talk, right? Maybe you've been watching me for a while. Maybe you've seen me walking my talk. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this one is one of the real ones. Book your call. And here's the thing, I don't only work with physicians, okay? I am a physician coach, yes, because that's my world. That's the world I live in. But, you know, I've coached, oh my goodness, I've coached people all across the map. All across the map. I've coached students with ADHD. I've coached, uh, I've ha had clients, you know, um, I've had clients, um, the, the, my youngest client was 15. My oldest client was in his late 50s. I've coached people all across the spectrum. So don't feel like, oh, I, she, I'm not, um, you're not a physician. I won't get you. Believe me, I get a lot of things. So, don't let people make you feel guilty about how you choose to manage your time. You're an adult. You get to choose. Don't let people make you feel guilty about what you're doing. If you're not doing anything that's illegal, immoral, or unethical, and you're just trying to do your best to live your own life, please, nobody has a right to make you feel guilty about it. So refuse those guilty feelings. Refuse those guilt trips. That's on them. That's not on you. Because people will be like, and then what happens is that a lot of times people see people stepping up to do what they want, and they're looking like, oh, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you doing this other thing that I want you to do? Some of them are just envious because they don't have the agent. They haven't chosen the agency you have. And how is that your fault? No. Last but not the least. You take the, if these things, if you feel like you're overwhelmed and in over your head, hire a coach. You may not be able to, if you may not be able to sort through all the mess on your own. And if it's been tangled up for a long time, you need more than, a, you know, a free master class. I was, I was, somebody posted today about, you know, um, learning, learning from people rather than just watching people on the surface and trying to cobble from what they're doing. It comes a time when you need a coach. There's only so much Googling you can do. Just like if you have a cut finger, you don't need a doctor for that, right? But if you get shot in the stomach, you need a doctor. Some people are the shot in the stomach equivalent and need a coach. And it's okay. I have coaches. <laughs> yes. And my life, since I've started working with them, each time I work with a coach, my life up levels. Like, and it saves me so much time, so much energy, so much money. And if you're a man, you're watching this. And you're one of these men that don't, won't let your wife hire a coach, but you go out and you buy yourself the latest car. Mm, God is watching you. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. Some people don't 
please, like coaching, what is that? And they don't want their spouse to, some people are afraid of their spouse's growth. Yeah, and I've had discovery calls with people who is like, oh, my husband doesn't want me to. Um, but, you know, but that same husband will go out and buy Bentley or a Mercedes. And it's like, oh, okay, we can't afford coaching, but we can afford a car. And that, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a car or a new car or whatever. You know, but it just goes to show where some spouse's priorities are. Some spouse's priorities are not invested in the growth of their spouses. Again, sorry to go there, but I'm not sorry. So the question is, I'm not saying go blow up your marriage, but the question is, how much can you afford to invest your energy in a relationship where your spouse doesn't have your best interest at heart? And that's all I'm going to say about that. Can do with it what you will. Um, so, you know, you may need to hire a coach. Some of these tips, you know, will work for you if you do them. But you may need to hire a coach if you like, like specific things, like let's look into the budget. Let me show you how to use Google Calendar, all of that. Of course, this is not the only thing I do as a coach. Like I said, my program, my year-long program, I have a bunch of things in there. Next month, I'm launching a program for moms. In March, I'm doing a three-day live event. In April, I'm launching a confidence course. Oh, my goodness. Then I'm launching two author coaches author coaching courses in May and June. I'm launching a social media course and then a, co a co course for coaches in October. If you'd like to know more, like I said, get on the call with me and then I can walk you through and talk you through everything the, for this year. And then you can decide, you know, again, I'll hear from you, um, the things you want to achieve right and if i can help you i'll tell you i can help you if i can't help you i you know me i ain't gonna take your money and run at all i don't operate like that that's why i've been here you know i've been coaching for what for five years you know and coaches come and go people come and go but uh, most people know i'm fairly i'm pretty consistent and you know when you coach with me you get every week we, we meet weekly via Zoom. So it's, it's, it's private coaching. It's not, it's not cookie cutter. So it's what do you want? Helping you build that life out for the next three months, six months, or a year. Um, and then we go into, the calls are recorded. So if you want them, you get my free video course, which talks about a whole bunch of things. It's seven modules, amazing stuff. If you want to do other things outside of medicine as a physician, you get my book for free. You get a bunch of gifts and you get, like I said, all my programs for the duration of time you're coaching with me. You get to come to all my programs for free. And those programs are anywhere between 200 to 500 dollars so you know you're getting very good value for money even from the programs alone so let me recap I, like i said i always write things down because if i don't write things down i will ramble on and on and on so remember this you are a valuable but a finite resource that's number one your life is your time and your time is your life okay in 60 years, all of us, likely all of us watching this, are going to be dead. So what are you going to do with the next half or thir two thirds of your life? You need to ask that question and ask it now and start to build the things you want now because we're not spring chickens. I'm not a spring chicken. A lot of people I see watching on this are not spring chickens. No, most of the people here are not 20. And if you're not 25, you're not a spring chicken. If you're 25 and above, you're not a spring chicken anymore. Sorry, not sorry. Number one, know where your time is going. Number two, organize your time around your true priorities. Three, schedule those priorities. Four, leverage the power of incremental change to get your tasks done. Five, set boundaries so that other things don't infiltrate. Eliminate time-wasting activities. Say no so that you can say yes to the things that matter. And last but not the least, if you need to hire a coach. Thank you so very much for watching. I will be back here tomorrow talking about how to deal with toxic work environments. Unfortunately, a lot of physicians are caught up in that. And, you know, beyond, yeah, get out, get out. What if it's not that easy to, uh, what if it's not that easy to get, get out? Um, how do you handle it? How do you work through? And that's what I'm going to be talking tomorrow. So see you tomorrow. If you're watching this on replay, please, um, you know, uh, type hashtag replay so that it pops up. If you're in the physician group, you can see it there. Um, in addition, 
what um uh invite other physicians to the group if you're watching this in the physician group and i will see you all tomorrow bye